Maximum hammer performance is partly based on the carrier setup. In this video, we will discuss the proper steps to ensure maximum compatibility between the NPK hammer and carrier. For efficient work, please take a moment to review the carrier setup procedures. When selecting a hammer and carrier combination for your project, it is important to follow the recommendations for hammer to carrier weight and hydraulic flow and operating pressure requirements. Refer to charts found in the service manuals for detailed information. After selecting the proper carrier and hammer combination for your project, refer to hammer specification chart found in the front of the NPK service manual for hydraulic flow and relief valve settings. Carrier hydraulic circuit testing will require a flow meter and pressure gauges installed on both supply and return shutoff valve test ports. With the flow meter and gauges installed, ensure that both shutoff valves are in the on position. Flow meter loading valve is in full open position. Activate the hydraulic circuit. The return line pressure should not exceed 300 PSI. After the return line pressure is noted, the carrier circuit relief must be verified. Turn the shutoff valves to the off position. Start the carrier engine and set engine speed to fast idle. Activate the hydraulic circuit. The carrier relief valve should be set to a minimum 500 PSI above the hammer operating pressure. With Komatsu carriers, minimum relief setting should be at least 1,000 PSI above hammer operating pressure. Once the relief valve and return line pressure testing is completed, warm the hydraulic oil to normal operating temperature. Activate the hydraulic circuit and turn loading valve clockwise until hammer operating pressure is seen on flow meter pressure gauge. Record the flow. Reference the hammer specification chart for acceptable flow range. Thank you for tuning into this video about carrier setup for maximum hammer performance. Please check out one of our other service instructionals.